I would go to Takura Zumfaro. It wasn't like my, my first music video, it was yeah. like actually my second music video, but with a, with a more mainstream artist. Yeah. And it, just how that happened. Uh, it was quite a life-changing story uh, for me, experience. Yeah. Where I was doing something else and then I ended up in a in kitchen that space. for like, what, two, two months? Yeah, I think it was about two, three months. Yeah, yeah about yeah. two, three months. And what then uh, happened was like, bro, yeah. you know, you, you go through situations so that maybe uh, it puts you in the right direction or certain things just have to happen a certain way yeah so that you can learn something yeah, yeah. and before that i think my career goes back to preschool Ooh. yeah <laughs> Ooh. what was happening there you like it's not like a career but I, yeah i think my interest your interest was, at least yeah because i was you know kind of gender crash met yeah. a film voice and, and initially I think I was given a role uh, and I nailed it. It was the first time I was in preschool. Yeah, you know, this is drama, like two years, Yeah, And then I didn't graduate that year. I went again the following year because my age was still, yeah. Yeah, you're too young. <laughs> yeah, I went to another one and then we did the same play again. And yeah, I think I would just give you some of the images. Yeah, so please do. Yeah. yeah, we can put them up as yeah. well. Yeah. And then from there, um, even in, in, in school, uh, so in our primary, it was just like art. You know, I, I was involved in everything, art, uh, sports, drama, yeah. drama um, music. I used to participate in all those in things. all those and, things. Yeah, even my teacher's remarks would say interested in art. But then my, my grades would be still... Your grades were still good like, as well. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because what tends to happen is that yeah. usually when people have an interest, yeah. they tend to lean heavily on, on one side. It's yeah. rare that you find with yeah. Manani Gandhi, like so you said, that yeah, attitude yeah. For, for the books and then that interest in sports. And yeah. then, ooh, that's interesting. So you're always like a well-rounded like, student. Is that fair? Yeah. I was... Uh, I think I was just someone who was, I'm still stubborn. Yeah. Uh, where I'm like, whatever I think I'm going to do, that's what I'm going to do. You set out to do something yeah. and go all the way. No, go now, so not I'm like, go, go, go. But if I believe it, I can play basketball, I could play you basketball. You go I was and short. try out, yeah. I wasn't really good. But, but you went. I, I still <laughs> <laughs> I played tennis, I played yeah. cricket, um, I, what else, played chess at school, you know, it, it was, yeah, whatever that was available, Yeah. then music lessons, uh, we used to have this music lesson, just your basic music, yeah. you know. Is it, is it fair to assume that by the time yeah, you got paid the high school, mm -hmm. um, did you, were you one of those people who had like a clear idea that I want to go and do ABC or you were not exactly sure where would, what mm -hmm. would your career path be? Mm -hmm. I, I never knew what I wanted to do when I was young. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's me as well, man. Yeah, I never knew what I wanted to be when I was young. I still don't know what I want to be. <laughs> You're still in the process of, still in the of process figuring, figuring that out. Figuring that out. <laughs> but I, I think um, what then happened was in high school, yeah. I, my grades started dropping. Yeah. What else was I focused on? I was still yeah, focused on music as well. We started, I think we started our first studio-ish oh, studio, you know, yeah. recording with those <laughs> headphone <laughs> microphones yeah. and just making music, making remixes and then around by the time I was in upper six, 
when did I? I dropped out some time yeah. level and then I <laughs> you went back or what? <laughs> I I went to work for because Maria Medu there was this guy who was there. Uh, he used to do graphics design. Oh. He had a lot of cameras. He was young, and he had his little startup. You know, and I was so interested in all this creative kind of work, and then I hit him up. No, I would like to come to work. Chi 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 chi. And he was like, cool, you can come. Yeah. And I dropped out. <laughs> so how long did you do that for? I, I think I worked for him for like two years. That was in 2011. Mm. Uh, not two years, sorry, two months. Okay. Two okay. months. That was yeah, because now I was thinking, so what were the parents saying? Could you come come and like, you know, uh, parents, guardians? Uh, what was the feeling there? It, it was just like, because I was stubborn, people had sort of like given up on me. They're like, guy, it is, I know them. Yeah, because like, I live with my siblings, so... They are also trying to, they are also young, you know, <laughs> they are trying to trying figure, to figure out, out their, their own their lives. lives. So, <laughs> they have taken me to school, I quit. So they have done their part. They have done their part. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I was sort of like just lucky and blessed to then have that. But it was a lot of fighting where they yeah. were like, okay, maybe try to do this if you want to make it. Um, because it was the same thing that we spoke about earlier where we were like, they are so concerned uh, how would this guy survive? How would this guy survive? He doesn't go to school. He doesn't go to school. <laughs> okay, they were like, okay, whatever. So I worked there for like two months. Yeah. But that's where I learned how to professionally use <coughs> Photoshop. Yeah. And just changing backgrounds of pictures. So we would take people to, to Sydney. You know, what those people do. But yeah. Was, <laughs> and I think yeah, someone there was out always something, I would say, there was always something about me where customers would then come back and they'll be like okay we would want you to do this instead yeah. of my other colleagues and i would change the dollar you know to change the background real quick ka, 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 ka. and that's simple. like really, relatively simple work very simple work <laughs> and i was so interested and then after the two months i continued just learning on my own after i left yeah and so 2014, you now yes. enter the industry. What happened for that to happen? Because I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, your LinkedIn says uh, you were on, uh, on a production team. Yeah. Um, what was happening then? What, well, how did that opportunity come about for you? Uh, so I, that's 2014. I'm, I'm in Cape Town, right? Yeah. I'm working as a chef for two months. And then <coughs> I was just meant to be there for a month, I think. Yeah. But then I think uh, circumstances made it like two months. Yeah. And that's when I went to work in the, in the kitchen. And then after that, I came back, left my, uh, my job, yeah. IT, IT job. And then um, that's when I think I got a job later on that year to start working for this company. Yeah. Uh, and I think by then, I don't know, you just have this like maybe spiritual awakening where yeah. you, it was a spiritual awakening where you're like, okay, this is the part maybe that I need to take right now. Yeah. And maybe <laughs> <laughs> I need I need to pick something yeah. and, and, and go at it. And then you know what? These things work in a funny way when you then just track the events leading to that. And from there, that's when I really started working on my professional career as a yeah. filmmaker. That's a, so you essentially decided, okay, so this is now what we're going to do. Had you already decided or you were still in that figuring things out phase? What, what do you think that was for you? Uh, when, I, I, when I went to... When I started work at the company, yeah. I remember I gave myself five years to learn there yeah. and work there and get my experience yeah and that time i, I just thought like i knew i was going to be there for five for five years, five years. Five or was it years. i committed myself period yeah i have to be here i have to be here yeah oh that's interesting that's interesting because <sighs> Why do you think, <laughs> was it like maturity that then, that then, or it was, because it's like we're saying, you, before you had music, you had graphic design, you had all these interests, IT school, like you mentioned. Yeah. 
um, why did you then settle on, on, on production and, and cinematography and that, that particular experience? Because now for five years we are now doing this yes. more seriously. I, I, I think even before when we were making music, yeah. I was so interested in just when we were making a song, okay, I'm already seeing the video, how am I going to shoot it? And we also had a camera that um, my friends and I had, yeah. one of our sisters had just bought that camera for us and we used to just record a lot of stuff, some of the music stuff that we yeah. used to do, still have the footage. Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, maybe sometime <laughs> yeah. we'll see it. Uh, and then so I, was, I was always interested in that. I remember, I think even at some point I used to do some you know, funny animations with Windows Movie Maker. Ah, that was like back in Form One. Yeah, it was just like uh, a lot of it. When I look back now, that's where I'm like, okay, it's always been. It's there. always been there. You know, it was. It's just that at the time you don't know which you are young and you don't creator. know, and also because of maybe the upbringing, you are more focused on other things. You know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> you're like. You're more encouraged as well with the books, GGG. Books, yeah. Books, that's what's important. We are being taught to learn, go and learn. And learning is so important even up to now. Yeah. I think even just that experience of going to school, uh, you get to a point where you start to mature later on and you spend your time at school. Yeah. Really learning cool. just basic things, some of them that I don't know now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird thing. I, yeah. I always see people joking around um, on, on Twitter, particularly. I saw something in the end, another day where I haven't used uh, the what's that equation? There's this popular equation. I'm, I'm beginning yeah. to learn. <laughs> but people, yeah, there's ah, that's yeah, that's such an, an, an interesting thing. But another thing I'm picking up is. And I think this might be true for me as well, Guti. Um, early experience with like a computer is like is so important. Hey? It's like such a defining thing in, yeah, in these stories. Computers really changed a lot, bro. Because my, my, my brother had um, this Pentium 1 computer of his. <laughs> yeah. That was big in primary. That's when I started learning how to use uh, a computer. And he doesn't even know this. Uh, yeah, but I think he used to suspect. So I used to, when he goes to work, I was the I would be the last one to leave the house. Yeah, and then when he goes, <laughs> when he goes to work, I some, some sometimes I wouldn't even get out of the house. I would sneak into his room. I would Just find my ways to get in the and to use my the computer. I used to design stuff, you know, like. Throughout the day, I couldn't even eat. Just, just, you yeah, just there. And, and then I look at the times now, like one people expect me to be back. I'm now you're out. out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, he's back. It, but he like, was there. There, there wouldn't be anyone. So I, <clears throat> there's a period where I didn't even go to play outside with others. Because you're just fixated. Yeah, I, I, I had that as a kid as well. It's, it's funny you mentioned Pentium 1. I think ours was a, a Pentium 2. Yeah. <laughs> Those huge desktops. Yeah, it was so big, huge Crazy. monitor, you know, floppy disks. And... Always fascinated by it. Always yeah. there. Just, just can't go outside, like you're saying. Yeah. And, ooh, that's interesting. But then, one of the things uh, about your careers is that, and we were talking about this briefly just before we actually started recording, yeah. is that it's uh, it's a bit of an uncommon career in the context of, of Zim. Like when we are going to school, we have popular careers. We're told, we're told about engineering, we're told about law, we're told about doctors, being a doctor is a big one. <laughs> um, what do you think for young people looking to become like cinematographers today? Yeah. What do you think is like um, the best, maybe not entry point, but the starting point? Starting point? Yeah. I, I wouldn't give a starting point. 
because you know situations and circumstances are different. Yeah. My story is different from your story. How yeah. you started and the times that I I started and the times that these guys are starting, are starting now. now. It's but kind of different, yeah. It's kind of different. But then I, I just feel like maybe follow your heart. And that's with anything. Yeah. 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 You know, like when you feel that <laughs> we this usually is know something that I'm really interested in, uh, you need to continue just nurturing that thing. That you're Finding interested. ways to, Finding to cultivate ways, that. Uh, if you're going to school, yeah, keep going to school. But then in your spare time, work on that yeah, thing. Yeah, slowly, like these are baby steps. Yeah. And, and, and I suppose at that time you also still, if you're younger, you still have time. You, you don't have to develop this skill necessarily overnight. You, you're just laying down the foundation. Yeah. I think those foundations with different experiences when you're growing up, they teach you different things. Yeah. From, like you say, um, one thing that I really learned about when I was in the kitchen was you, need, you just need to be hardworking and, and you need to be focused. Yeah. Because when I got in there, I was in this gallery, bro, and we test sugar my place. Yeah. What you're saying, kuti kumba, kuti sugar my place, bro. If anyone has ever worked in a kitchen, they'll tell you that. The difference. And you are doing it manually. <laughs> yeah. It was like New Year. I think I started on the first of first of January. Which is like an extremely busy 2014. time. 2014. Yeah. <laughs> You have a hangover from New Year's uh, <laughs> Eve yeah. and you get to work <coughs> and it's busy. You, you are clearing a whole pile of dishes and when you cleared it, you raise your head up. Sorry. <coughs> There's already another. Yeah. Oh man, that sounds, <coughs> that sounds crazy. Yeah, and you have this kid that's coming from a place where you used to be just using computers and doing yeah. that kind of work. <laughs> of course, you know Suka Kumba, so you know how to, but you don't know at that like sort of. It's not hard work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not hard work when you're doing it at home. That it's was hard work. Five, six plates for yeah. an arrival. That was hard work. <laughs> and I did that for like, I think the first two weeks, it was like double shifts. You know, yeah. I'd, I'd go there at 7 a.m., I finish at 1 a.m. every day. Yeah. So by the time you get home, you were like, wait, did you just get home and sleep and wake up? <laughs> and wake and up, back to work. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to do it again. And I think by the time I left, I then left the scullery now yeah. working as a prep chef, preparing just ingredients that would be used. By the chef, by the chef, by the chef, and just learning more things, even just preparing some dishes. So, yeah. Oh yeah, that sounds like it. Yeah, that sounds like a brutal experience. Yeah. That. So by by that day, yeah, when you get when you work so hard that within a short space of time you are now put in a like a better position. Yeah. You're now working just three hours a day. Yeah. And you're getting more than what you're getting. What you're getting when you're working, working. that's more than a 12 hour shift. Yeah. That sounded like maybe yeah. 15 whatever yeah. hour shift. So it was just like, okay, if you really work hard, it doesn't matter what's going on. You know, there are a lot of things that you have to deal with, especially in SA. Uh, yeah. 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 It's it's a lot. Especially as a, as a foreigner. As a foreigner like... <laughs> from Zimbabwe. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot, but then just focusing, I guess, and just focusing on what's in front what's of you. in front of you. Yeah, and I think that was just like... A, a One thing. of the biggest takeaways from yeah. that. Yeah, and yeah. then it's something that then, it's not like a lesson that you, I think that's the Jakarta, but it's now something that's in you. You know. You know that, you. okay, if I really work hard and if I Blood really focus, and tears. it's now just in you. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so now you're like, um, I think from last year, and correct me if I'm wrong, you are the co-founder of a production company, yes. uh, Creative Mice Films. Mm -hmm. So um, why did you feel you needed uh, to now make your own company and start doing it by yourself? I think it's a... Uh, why did I think? Yeah. Filmmaking as a, as a career, it's not like... A, 
something that you can do on your own. Yeah, I th yeah, I think I need to correct that. When I even when I say by yourself, yeah. but I mean under your own company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because so, you you have a team and you have other people that you work yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's like okay, realizing that maybe now this is actually a career, and not just like a filmmaker. I'm still a filmmaker, but also now just trying to then brand and also bring other people who are like-minded in yeah. and also maybe nurturing new talent, new talent and just growing the thing and doing it right and I, I also had to do business studies at some point yeah and uh, it was like okay I'm learning because I now want to leave work that was before and yeah. I also just need to learn how business is run and that's helping not manage myself yeah. as a brand and then now trying to go professional and just grow with others yeah. and maybe pushing the whole Zimbabwean narrative forward, the African narrative forward and ushering in a new generation of, of storytellers. Yeah. 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 So that's why we started where we're like, okay, we also now want to go formal. And, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a about lot pushing of work. That. Yeah, yeah. It's also yeah. a lot of work. We're, we're still starting. Still yeah. starting. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, um, you guys have um, a, a portfolio of like, uh, impressive work. We'll touch on, on, on some of that. But uh, some of the stuff, and, and this will sound like a lie, right? Because yeah. you're here, but. Um, some of the stuff that you've worked on, uh, I think It's Okay Not To Be Okay by Takura. Mm -hmm. uh, when I saw that, I'm a big Takura fan. Uh, yeah. When I saw that, I was like, wow, this is like a brilliant video. Yeah. Uh, I think that was uh, two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw that and I was like, wow, this is a brilliant. So when I went on your site uh, researching for this episode and I saw it there, I was like, wow, who would have known? Who yeah. Would? So yeah, there's... Um, there's been an impressive uh, body of work that you've made over the past uh, year, year and a half, where uh, Enzo Aisha Otashota, uh, Takura Mufaro, short films, you've done a number of those. Um, Love in Lockdown, I, I love that. Um, Eastern Highlands Experience. Um, and then documentaries, uh, two in particular that I really, really loved. Um, Basketry in Binga yeah. and uh, Tanganda. Yeah. So maybe let's discuss uh, basketry in B in Binga just to get maybe a feel of how you work, right? Um, by the way, it won an award last year, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a number of awards. One for sound and one for no, that it it won one. Oh, it was one. one. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Um, but then it was nominated in like three three categories. categories yeah. yeah, congratulations on that, oh, by the way. Hey. Uh, so that's a particularly interesting story because there's an element of uh, rarity in that, and it also ties, I think, very strongly to the thing you, you mentioned about uh, pushing the Zimbabwe narrative forward, right? Yeah. Um, why was that like a story that you felt you strongly wanted to tell? I think. Uh, I've been, I've been just trying to paint a positive picture on on Zim, maybe. yeah. Because uh, there are a lot of those uh, that just are around the country, and I've been, I think, fortunate and privileged and blessed enough to just go around Zim and see what's happening, yeah. And just seeing what's within Zim uh, for the past few years, and it's just like okay. I have this talent that I feel like I can tell stories. Why don't I just tell? Them? Why don't I? Yeah. 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 And then eventually people start picking up on that. And I think that's how my producers found me yeah, through, through mutual friends. Yeah. Where they're like, okay, we're working on this project and uh, who can we work with? And then they reached out and I was like, okay, this is something that I strongly feel like a story that I would want to tell. Yeah. And I remember telling one of my producers back then, I was like, this being a story, I feel so strongly about it that 
let's see what's going to happen in the next few years or in the next year after we after, made after, it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that was way before I think during the initial stages of yeah. pre-production yeah so it was like okay it was something that I felt like you just had to you had, had to, to document and it wasn't an, a coincidence that it came to me it, while I'm taking the same idea oh yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah that's actually really interesting that sometimes that's how the pieces come together yeah. hey? like you're not necessarily playing all the parts but you have other people and, 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 and they find you and so in terms of you, you mentioned pre-production there mm -hmm. uh, because like I said it's, a, it's really a, a brilliant uh, short documentary mm -hmm. right um, how long does it take you with something like that to go maybe from ideation mm -hmm to the final output that we get to see that's on your YouTube channel? Normally, uh, for something like that, yeah. like, it depends on who you're working with and how, how fast it's needed. And it's a lot of there are a lot of different elements. Yeah. Yeah. Where, okay. Yeah. But then I think if there's a brief, if you're given a brief and you shoot, by the time you shoot, then delivery doesn't have to take long because yeah. there's been a lot of pre-production that has been happening when you're planning. Maybe it takes a month or so to plan that yeah. whole thing amongst other things that you're planning. Yeah. And then when you then get to start shooting, you pretty much know what you're aiming for in the end. Yeah. So it then doesn't take long for you to... From the shooting from to the, the post-production post where we get the yeah. final... Especially when you're done your pre-production work. Uh, yeah. So, so maybe, I, I hadn't thought about that when I was preparing for this, but that's actually very interesting yeah. um, that you mentioned uh, that pre-production is the most important thing. I yeah. think I tend to see it with this as well. Mm -hmm. There's more work in that than the shooting itself, the editing. That's, that's relatively easier, yeah. right? For is there is there any part of the process that you would say you enjoy much more than other parts of the process? I, I think the most uh, the most the most interesting or part that I enjoy more yeah. is color grading because when Ooh. you're doing the color now, it's yeah. like the final thing, the last thing that you do, and yeah. you know that. Okay, I'm not playing with colors. If I shot well, my thing is going to look like the way I want it to be. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, but I'm done. If I just finish this, I'm done. <laughs> also, there's also, yeah. also that excitement, excitement of just final, finishing, finishing final product is yeah. there. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. you send it to get a few changes. But I've been lucky that. Because of a lot of pre-production that we do, I don't normally get a lot of changes. Okay, yeah, like you send it out to the client, client and, then and, the one and they love two. it. Yeah, yeah, one or two and we're done. So it's like, okay, yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, yeah, that sounds really good. Yeah, because sometimes with, with the clients, like the back and forth. There's, there's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of, yeah. because maybe they have, you have a vision in your head. Uh, they have a vision in your head and somewhere along the line in terms of communicating it you're maybe not necessarily meeting each other yeah, exactly yeah. where you need to be yeah. in terms of dealing with, with, with clients and because the work that you do requires that you, you deal with a lot of people you deal with a lot of people in pre-production mm -hmm. uh, the producers, the people maybe commissioning the film um, when you get to shoot you deal with a different set of people You've also got a team. That's another set of people that you, you work with, right? Um, what do you think are the qualities you need? Uh, because my assumption, <laughs> the moment you're talking about we're dealing with a lot of people, yeah. I'm assuming patience is one of them. Mm -hmm. Are there any other qualities that, you know, someone who wants to be in this line of work or that help actually you, that where you are like, yeah, maybe but through like working with other people and experiencing this industry more, I developed a, a, a characteristic like this. I know it's a bit of a vague question, yeah, but yeah. I hope you, you get what I'm trying to say. I, I think it's, it's, it's a learning curve. 
like you're always just learning each and every day when you yeah. meet new people and you deal with different situations yeah. uh, when you deal with like top level um, I would say maybe top level people in an organization or top government officials when you get into into the offices how do you conduct yourself yeah. when you're talking to some of these yeah and you are learning just how different situations work and sometimes because you do a lot of because we did a lot of weddings back then and yeah. when when you're working on a wedding anything can happen your camera can just stop working <laughs> and yeah what's happening in front of you uh, is cannot be repeated yep how do you stay calm and solve that thing because <laughs> you, you have to capture something. Yeah, right? at the end of the day, they just want their you video. You have to deliver. They want their video, yeah. the video of their weddings. So, so it's and like you, you really have to learn just thinking out of the box sometimes um, and using what's, 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 what you have in your hands or yeah. what, what, what you have at your disposal. And also patience, like you said. Yeah. I wasn't patient before. Yeah. And I'm still not that patient. Yeah. But then <laughs> you learn you have to learn to be patient. Yeah. And I just feel like patience is something that's needed even in, in real life. Even yeah, because like you're saying, um, we were talking about, you know, building a career, that takes time. Yeah. It takes time before maybe your parents take you seriously, before the broader world take, takes you seriously. Yeah. You before you need... You take yourself seriously, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had to learn that you need to be patient. Yeah. And also, you need to be in, intentional about certain things. Where you're like, I can't, I can't do this, or I won't do this. Yeah. I'll do this instead. So when, when you then get to, to a set, you understand, okay, what's, what's my role here? Yeah. If, if I'm handling the production, then... Yeah, because I pretty much a small team. Yeah. Uh, and even up to now, you know, we've started a company, but it's pretty much like a very, very small team. Yeah. Trying to figure out systems that work. And you are like pretty much just handling a lot of the stuff that's happening there. Pretty yeah. much handling the whole production. That whole set. I think solo filmmakers <laughs> would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that sounds... I think that is uh, one of the most challenging things about um, entrepreneurship, especially at, at the start, is that you have to learn so many things and quite quickly, yeah. if you're to survive, you have to learn those things like very, very rapidly. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's interesting, man. Um, and so there's one dynamic that always uh, interests me. Uh, we talked about you being a co-founder, right? Which yeah. means you have another founder working with you. Yeah. Um, there are always risks and benefits to that. Because yeah. um, obviously, more more brain power is more brain power. That's a positive in and of itself, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that can also lead to like a split vision. Um, so maybe in your case, you know, why did you feel that uh, having a co-founder and having a, a small team that you also work with, um, why did you feel that was the best approach to take with Creative Mice? Uh, I think Creative Mice is still in its infancy yeah where of course we want to go it into something that's bigger yeah and just maybe it's something where i'm like okay uh, if we then go into the future uh, we need to start it right but then you also just have to be careful with the kind of um, i would say people that you get in business with yeah. 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 <laughs> because and also just how how do they understand you know, what you're doing and what are they signing up for? 
Um, are they like um, a controlling partner? Are they like a silent partner? Yeah. Or what are they? And I feel like, yeah. Those the clear are, it is yeah, from the start. And also for me, <laughs> like, it then go, takes me back to, I think that's when maybe business school came in a little bit. Yeah. Where you're like, okay, maybe I can do it this way or I can do it that way. Okay, yeah, it's like an experience you had learned within yeah. the context of business school. Yeah. I know uh, this will come as a surprise to you because I didn't brief you on this, but uh, I love doing this to creatives because creatives, you, work, you guys work on a number of things that yeah. are usually great, right? Um, from all of... Um, Actually, maybe all is broad, but let's start there. From all of the, the projects, you've, the films and, and everything you've been commissioned to do as a cinematographer, right? Yeah. Do you have a, a baby that is um, your favorite? Do you have one where you're like, I absolutely loved this, and then one maybe where you absolutely hated it? Do you have a favorite and a least favorite? Uh, I pretty much love all my work. Yeah. Um, because it's like telling a, a mother to, to yeah. forget their child or to choose which child. <laughs> to choose which child is their favorite. Telling a parent to, to choose a child. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's cliche, yeah. but uh, of course there are some projects where I'm like, uh, you know, I would go to Takura Zumfaro. It wasn't like my, my first music video. It was yeah. like actually my second music video. But with a... With a more mainstream artist yeah and it, just how that happened the whole like events living leading, leading up to sorry, it. leading in, yeah. into it and yeah how we, we got in and got out just doing it was that really great during covid it was like wow Ooh, are you are you at liberty to speak about that because now this involves like another party so I'd, are you at like you yeah, touch because on like, that? Uh, yeah, I think it's 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 something where you are like okay, uh, I was working on something else like out of her and yeah. and, and literally in a not bush but in yeah. a Tongo you know, yeah. I'm, I'm working in a place where it's a so remote, in a remote area. area. And then I I have a I happen to and I I I've been out of town for like more than a month. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> for, for like two weeks, I was in a place where yeah. I had no network. Yeah. I couldn't just, maybe just reach you out. You can't reach out to people. Yeah. I couldn't go more. I couldn't go more. Maybe send some messages. So send some messages. Make some calls. Yeah. And then I get a message from, from, from TK and then he's like, no bro, I need to, there's something that I'm working on. I need to, we need to shoot a video. Mm. Same, same, same Did you guys know each other before, or you were no. on some? I've yeah, seen yeah, your work. Yeah, I've seen some of my work. Oh, that's yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and then <laughs> like, okay, he sent me the track, and I've always wanted to work with him. Yeah, I think before. Brilliant because, artist. Because Just like one of the best. <laughs> facts. <laughs> facts, like yeah. Yeah. And you like just listening to the song and some faro. It's just everything that's happening with this track. I'm already just writing the script in my head. Yeah. By the time I finish uh, listening to the song, I'm like, okay, cool, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some a higher power is like speaking yeah, to yeah. you, like giving and you that. I message. had to get on a track that was coming to Harare yeah. um, the following day, and uh, following day or two, I guess. Yeah. I remember it was a Wednesday, and. From that Wednesday, we shot on the Sunday, and on the Monday, I delivered. And that's I like was, a really great I video. I was already living for going back to work. <laughs> and, and, yeah, even if, yeah, you then just agreed. The, 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 the way, changed. yeah, the way you worked Nothing was, was just changed. smooth. So was the first cut, that's what. Yeah, that, I, I love stuff like that where it's almost like like something has spoken to him, yeah. something has spoken to you, and, just and things move so... Because yeah. we are even on the shoot, uh, 
We have, we, we, everything that was on the schedule, we started, we wanted to start at 7-ish, I think we then started at 8, but we yeah. wanted to finish at 5.30. Yeah. At 5, yeah, 5, between 5 and 5.30 5 because we're going for the sunset for the last shots. Yeah. So by the time we're now shooting those um, shots, it was yeah. around the time that we had stated, good to this is time we wanted to finish. Yeah. By the time we got dark, because we were scheduled, it was time Everyone to, yeah. does. By the time we got dark, I think everyone was in the houses. Yo. A lot, a lot of stuff like that that yeah. comes together like so, yeah. so smoothly. So, so to so me, smoothly. it was just like, okay, it's also my first commercial music, music video. And it's someone that I believe is really, really talented, talented, yeah. Talented, his work, and just the music that was there. It's there. Yeah. It, it, it's, yeah. At the same time, you know. Yeah, because that's a really powerful song yeah. as well. Yeah. It, yeah. Like one of his most powerful songs. Yeah. So I was just like, okay. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. So that, I think that for now, that, that's the one. That's the one where you're like, yeah, Just because of I, how it worked. How it happened. The, just atmosphere on set. Everyone who was on set could attest. It was just like, a, I think that was just moving. It had to happen. How I found <laughs> extras, like, yeah. all, most of those people were my friends that were just like, okay, cool, yeah. you can come on set. Um, and also, everyone was, Friend, some someone will come with a friend. Yeah, until you guys have like a until full we have like a <laughs> crew. <laughs> yeah, cast. Of, of yeah, cast. yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. I, I I love that, and because like you're saying during COVID, that's very important context because for us like that was like a hard time to to move around even during uh, the curfews, yeah. right? Like my my roadblocks and whatnot. It was really a tough time. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's. It's interesting to hear like how what is one of my favorite songs was made. No, that's really that's really yeah. beautiful, man. Yeah. And so before we close off, um, I would love to ask you um, what are the challenges of running a production company in our context in Zim? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. That's a loaded question, I know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, it's yes, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So it's a yeah. lot that we have to just um, deal with. Uh, it's. I think every entrepreneur, you know, knows what, the environment that we operate in. Yeah most of the things that we don't have control over. Yeah. And it's like you just have to find ways. It's, it's survival. Yeah. It's survival. Where you have to find a way to make it work while you're also trying to manage your, your personal life and also <laughs> <laughs> trying to just make yeah. things work and, yeah. and see where you are, where you are going. You're trying to see where it's going, and you're also trying to see who are you moving with, and what's uh, what's around you, policy-wise, policy wise, <laughs> financially. Yeah. Uh, also, just dealing with people and managing relationships. Yeah. You know, all of the stuff, is just like, okay, um, how do we maneuver? It's a lot of learning. It's a, it's a lot of learning where, <laughs> where it then goes back to me saying it's, it's not something that's like a short term thing. I, yeah. I don't know about, uh, I would say, creative mice is not a short short term thing. Maybe it, yeah. it, it will fail or but it, will, <laughs> it will move forward. But yeah. whatever that's happening right now, I think it's. Just me trying to figure out how to move forward and and equip others, equip myself, also yeah. improve the industry, like contribute to the industry. Yeah. There's a lot of work in yeah, that regard. There, yeah. there, there's a lot of uh, work in that regard. And also just realizing that we are the young people, you know, but I'm, I'm talented in this and this is what I can do. Yeah. It falls on us. Yeah. To so <laughs> I, I think it's all, almost just playing my part. You know? Yeah. And that's what everyone I think needs to just 
learn that, especially for the young people, yeah. you need to play your part. Uh, find where you fit. Yeah, and you should choose your lane and stay in your lane. Yeah. Because yeah, the moment you try to get into the lane that's not yours, <laughs> and a lot, no a lot knows, goes there. Yeah. Yeah. No one knows what's going to happen. Yeah. But if you are in your lane, at least you can see what's, yeah. what's in front of yeah. you. Yeah.